Amal, that action, everyone's situation is different. Despite the fact that the Amal is Azim, is great, it's a deed that Allah Ta'ala has given, but the difference comes between the people. That some are less, some are more in the practice, some in terms of the Darajat, so that that Amal is practiced, but the darajat, there's a difference. So it's dependent on the emotions and the situation within a person. That Allah Ta'ala has given to that person. That that action, that amal, if an individual understands its greatness, understands its importance, understands its glory, and he values it and appreciates it, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, on that amal, he gives that person so much benefit and thawab according to that the status of the deed that's practiced by the person. So that's the reason why certain individuals practice a deed but they don't get the benefit from that practice, from that action because inside they don't hold the importance for that action. They don't understand the greatness of that action. On their hearts they don't have the esteem and they don't realize or recognize the importance of that action. They hear always oh, thawab in this action, okay, I'll do it, I'll get thawab. They work hard as well. But this situation is beyond working hard or making effort. Remember, that amal, that action you're doing, if you were to understand its greatness and its glory, then when you implement that action, that amal, then alhamdulillah, with that emotion you implement that action, with the greatness, with the importance, with the esteem that you have, then as you practice that with love and caution, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow His rahmah to rain down onto that person due to that action. That's why it's stated that dhikr of Allah, when an individual does it, dhikr Allah, then he should do it at that time, and in that, in, in such a manner that there's no greater ni'mah for the action in his heart than that. And he should consider this as a treasure. I'm doing the dhikr of Allah. Allah's rahmah and mercy is with me that I'm doing the dhikr of Allah. And Allah's qurb is with me. So dhikr definitely benefits an individual. With every amal Allah has given this quality and effect. And as a person improves and the greatness of an action comes into his heart then he starts to benefit from the action so when he values it when he appreciates it understands the importance of it when you sit in a majlis in a gathering the more respect you have and the more emotion you have in the heart when you go to the majlis then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to that proportionately gives to that person so you can test that you can test that out that this is called faz it's Allah's choice, the fares that He gives. And it's in your control as well. That if you go with waswasa, negative thinking, bad thoughts, negative thoughts, and negative concept uh, about what you're about to do, then you won't get the benefit. So the first thing is, that for example, before salah you do wudu, take salah as an example, then you wash away your sins and the dirt and you go and do that ibadah. So whenever you do any amal, then understand in the depth of your heart the importance of that amal you're doing, the, the greatness of that amal, the, gr- the glory of the amal. Then with that glory, approach that deed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that for example, we've seen in the khankas, that everybody comes, people come to meet their sheikh, 
to sit in the gathering. Yes, people going to meet, who used to go to meet Hazrat, my Sheikh, but there were some people that prior to coming, yes, that three times, for example, if they're coming in a day, but never would they imagine that they would go to their majlis of their Sheikh and sit without wudu. So prior to coming, they would do wudu, they would pray nafil, and they would do some adhkar, they would do some adhkar and present a gift, a gift that I'm going to go to the majlis and they give a gift and they do dua that the thawab goes to Hazrat, then they do dua that Allah, I'm going to Hazrat's gathering, so please allow me to control my thinking, my movements, that save me from bi, from disrespect, from doing something wrong. And uh, they would then give sadqa prior to attending the majlis and whatever they were capable of and then they'd go and present themselves and, and attend the majlis. So the whole emotion of a person would change by doing that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at the hearts of people. The hearts. That an individual, a person, is going for the sake of Allah when he's doing something. If you're going to a majlis, you're going for the sake of Allah. Nobody's forcing you. Nobody's forcing you that you must do this or you must do that. But in the heart, if you have a thought... That I'll get Allah Ta'ala's, the connection with Allah, the nearness. This is the path to attain Allah's qurb through this majlis and gathering. So when you go towards the source where you get the nearness to Allah, then you should have total respect and esteem and love for that source. And if you don't have that, then there are two ways. If you don't have it, then even, then you should implement the action. Force yourself to do that. Get yourself used to do that. Yeah, that no, I'm going to go to the gathering, I'm going to go in this way, and whispers and negative thoughts are coming in my mind, but I'm going to prepare like this and approach the majlis the way. When a person imitates, even though he's not got the full conviction, then Allah makes it asal, genuine after that. So this is Allah Ta'ala's rahmah, looks at that person's intention, that yes, he's following the path, he's traveling the path. And if you attend uh, disrespectfully, or if you do something just for the sake of it, then Allah Ta'ala... Just gives the thawab, for example, if you go to pray salah, or you're reciting Quran, whatever you're doing, you should approach in this way. Allah has put some restrictions, that for example, Allah Ta'ala says that when you read the Quran, you have to read it in a pure manner. If you're pure, then touch the Quran. For salah, if you've got wudu, then pray. Then come to salah. These are obviously the conditions Allah Ta'ala has put, but on top of that, these are not enough. These are basic preparations for ibadah. Basic preparations, minimum. If you're about to recite Quran, then it's a great thing to recite Quran. And if you're doing it, for example, you want to attain something from the Quran, you want to realize something from the Quran, and you want to get benefit, then alhamdulillah, the great tariqah is that the, the Quran is the sheikh for the individual. Oh, well, is it like a teacher, the Quran? It's a guide. What's the difference between a sheikh physically and the Quran? The difference is this, that the Qur'an, it tells us and the shaykh brings you towards amal. So that's what the Qur'an is, is a guide. So it's the same adab. Same adab. So whatever source through which you attain Allah's name is, then you have to be extremely respectful and you have to humble yourself, lower yourself, present your heart. No, no, I say, okay, oh, we'll go there one day or we'll do this one day. Think about your heart at that time. What's your heart feeling? And pay tawajjah towards your heart that I'm about to do such a good deed now, and my heart's not happy, that why is there nifaq inside me? Why is there hypocrisy inside me? Why am I not getting benefit? So Allah Ta'ala says, that salah is such a great action, salah is a great action, and we know the benefits, yes, Allah Ta'ala has told us all the benefits of salah. And the Shaykh Sobat is such, about which is stated, that when you sit with, in the company of the Shaykh, you'll never leave without success or benefit. He's the, the source of guidance. That's why from thousands of miles people would travel to meet their sheikh, their teacher. And I, once I was present in the service of Hazrat Nur al Marqada, and a person came, poor soul, and I think that is in our dear Ghazi Khan, it's very hot, high temperature, and he looked very tired and exhausted. He came and sat down, 
And somebody asked him, where have you come from? How did you come? He said, I was traveling for two days to see Hazrat Sahib. For two days I was traveling. That's a person who comes with such effort and hard work and caution. He will never leave empty handed. Never leave empty handed. Never think this, that for the sake of Allah you are moving your legs and you are making effort and you will leave empty handed. Impossible. Impossible. So it's just that what's lacking inside us, the, the problems, this is what destroys a person. But remember my friends, remember this one thing, that Allah Ta'ala has given us many resources and means to attain His nearness. But we are such that, that we don't look at what's our state inside us. We don't look at our love and our emotion and our preparation. Just, you can work hard, that's fine, that's on its own. It doesn't matter how hard you work and put effort in, but if you don't have the greatness for the action in your heart, you can't get the benefit. You see in Ramadan, such a great month is Ramadan. Yes, how fantastic a month is Ramadan. Allah's Nabi says, prior to this month arriving, He explained the greatness of this month. It's a complete hadith, so that people can understand the greatness of their month in their hearts. Otherwise, it will go to waste for them. Yes, this month will go to waste for them. And we'll just spend this month like normal months. So, uh, totally uh, there should be changed when you read the hadith and advance uh, how much great points, how much greatness has been mentioned by this month. The, the doors of maghfirah open for a person. Tell me, maghfirah, forgiveness, is it a minor thing? At that time we'll realize when it will be the plane of resurrection and on the day of judgment that we don't know about years that for example there will be the earth, there will be so hot, the heat, and the, the sun will be so low, close, people will have come out of their graves. And there will be severe conditions at that time, distress, the sweat that will come out of a person's body. He will be drowning in his sweat. And what will that person be waiting for? What will everybody wait for? Me, you, everyone, very quickly, soon will be there. Just like what we're waiting for here now. We are waiting for death while we're on the earth, isn't it? Everybody, the grave is in front of us. Yeah, we're in a waiting list. We're in a queue. That, oh, he's going, it's my turn next, it's my turn next. So when is our turn going to come? Allah Ta'ala knows where we are on the list. But we're in the queue. Whoever's born, he's in the queue, in this dunya, and he's traveling towards the grave. He's not going anywhere else. That's his destination, is the qabr, the grave. So we're all in the queue. And he dies. After dying, then there's another queue. Remember this. Yeah, then he's not free after that. What queue is that? That will be the, the queue on the day of resurrection. The plane of resurrection. The dead people are waiting for that. When you hear this, you get scared inside the grave. Oh, has Qiyamah come, they say. So here, the Qiyamah, we don't understand the, the, about Qiyamah much here because we are more concerned about the grave. That's our first destination. So we have less khawf for Qiyamah, but we have more fear for the Qabr. For the grave. It happens that when there's a danger that's going to come first, you're scared more about that, concerned about that. And your thought and focus will be more on the danger that's going to come first, not the one that's after. So the grave is closer in terms of the face. So and people who have understanding, they do dua always for the qabr. Ya Allah, make the, this uh, journey easy for me, save me from the azab of qabr. A person who's here in the world, and a person, for example, don't think that when he dies, he doesn't have consciences. He can hear, he can feel, he can see. We think when they die, they're nothing. He's doing everything, he's speaking. And they ask him, what's happened to you? The person who's died, who's in the grave. They're saying, where are you taking me? Why are you taking my clothes off? Why are you doing this? He says that. What's the situation? Ya Allah, say, come on that Allah Ta'ala takes away the power of his voice and his communication. There's a veil between the person. He speaks, but we cannot hear him. The diseased person. But some ears and hearts are so clean, they can also hear the voice that that person, whatever that person is saying. They can hear. Yeah? So this is Allah Ta'ala's choice. They can even hear what's in the, happening in the cover. They can take the message from the deceased. It's Allah Ta'ala's choice. So what's happening here, is that in that situation when a person dies, how, what's he waiting for? He's in the grave many years. We don't know what situation will be in the grave. But here we're in a queue. We're waiting for death. We are waiting for the death to come. So we'll go into the grave. And those who die and they're already into the grave, they've already forgotten the world that's gone before them. Now he's focused on what's going to come. And he's more afraid after that. Because he's closer to that destination of the day of judgment. So on every knock, every noise, is it happening now? Is it day of judgment now? Is it hashr now? Brothers, that 
that this is a statement of Hazrat Sahib that we are sitting here without fikr. There are big, big tests to come, Hazrat Sahib said, my Shaykh. Big, big challenges to come. We're just enjoying ourselves in this dunya. We think we're fine. Yes, but Allah Ta'ala swore by the age of the, uh, the Holy Prophet that, that I swear by your age that people are unaware of the sins, the qawm of Lut. They never listened to their Prophet and to Allah to the extent that they started such a big uh, sin amongst the men. A big, big sin. Then Allah Ta'ala said that you don't understand. These are not the people who will understand. They have gone towards extreme wrong. And they think it's enjoyment. And a person gets to that dangerous situation. He goes so much into doing what he wants. He thinks everything that Allah Ta'ala says he can reject. Everything he takes temporarily and materially. But these sources that Allah Ta'ala has given to us of ibadat, worship, Ramadan, dhikr of Allah. These are great resources Allah has given to us. And they are taking us, aiding us towards a big destination. Reality. What is that? That that person in the grave, he will see. So when he'll stand, a person will be in the grave where our parents, our uh, predecessors, our ancestors, they're all there in the grave. They're in that line, that queue. And if you think about it, it's not some normal place, the grave. And imagine the day of resurrection, what will happen to us? Yes, the events of Hashar. Resurrection. So what will a person be waiting for? For maghfirat, for forgiveness. Yes, and whoever is forgiven there, then he will stand with, uh, with happiness. The, the happiness is coming. Today, what's the situation today? Today, for example, the, the, the maghfira is raining down in Ramadan. Raining down, but we're not aware of that. Maghfira, forgiveness. Nobody values it, nobody appreciates it. Ramadan's come, we're just spending it like normal. The day comes, we spend it like more. Dhikr comes, we're doing the same dhikr, in the same way, same intensity. In other words, that door that's opening now, we should open it now in the nice way, due to which we'll be saved then from the punishment afterwards. This is a hadith. There will be some people that they will bypass all of the challenges of their after. They'll go to the side. They won't need to um, be accounted for, see the severity in the challenges, because they aren't properly in the dunya. They did their work properly in the dunya. So take, they took everything seriously in the dunya. They understood that in this majlis was the benefit in this action. And remember, after every majlis, this is a gathering of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance. Yes, and in our eyes and our minds, we don't have importance for this. But you know, the, the, when an action, its importance is explained, then it's told, the hadith, the prophet said, why did he mention this? This is much tawab, and the doors of Jannah open, and you get hoors, and you get these rewards. For this reason, so that the greatness of this action sits in our hearts, and we practice it and get the reward according to that deed. And after that deed, what is the reward that we should get? Now, for example, there's so much praise the Prophet has mentioned about the dhikr of Allah, the gathering of dhikr of Allah. What is it? What is it? What is it? And in the end, he said that you will get that result from this, that within a second you get them. That what you will have to wait forever in the rafta, that when a person comes to the majlis and he has greatness for it in his heart, he understands the glory of the majlis. And as just like it's explained, that people who goes to our Hazrat Sahib's company, and it was the same gathering like we're sitting here there was Thursday night the majlis and it used to be uh, set and prepared it was extremely hot and after some time then after Dhor I would see and I would sit there you know, on the bank of the pavement on the road and I'd see that slowly what's happening after Zohar on Thursday and people coming on the cycles on the donkeys mashallah they start from Zohar time on Thursday, somebody is tying his bike here, somebody is tying his animal here, the darvesh, mashallah, wearing the mashallah, beautiful attire, come from village, rural areas, because in the evening there will be a majlis of dhikr wala, will go there and sit there. That was the intention. In advance they'd start the preparation. And when they'd, when they'd go back, then they'd return with lots of benefit from that gathering, lots of benefit. So, as long as you're doing an action, if you don't have the importance and the greatness of the action in your heart, you can't get the benefit from it. So from the dhikr of Allah, the gathering we're sitting in, we should understand the greatness. We come, we say, oh, he's hosting dhikr, we'll sit there for a while and go, no. The Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas, if Allah Ta'ala allows you to do an action time and time again, then time and time again we should have the greatness and respect for that, so that we are saved from the severity of thereafter. Allah says, I'm giving you chances. With speed you're going towards death. You have time now before death. Get the result now before the death. 
So what's announced about the dhikr wala? When the dhikr wala majlis ends, when the gathering of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance ends, after that Allah Ta'ala says to his angels, the go and announce. Go and announce. And this announcement's made for this reason that Allah Ta'ala prepares that plain that's in the hereafter that you'll be saved from the difficulty and you've earned goodness today. What's announced? Allah Ta'ala announces the go Allah Ta'ala has forgiven you due to this majlis, due to the gathering. And with maghfira, the certificate's also given a reward. And what's that reward? That the small uh, minor issues that you had and the problems in the sense that mashallah you've got maghfira, you've got forgiveness but on top of that there will be no hurdles for you also yes that nobody should ask you for your passport in the hereafter after you pass away nobody should pester you Allah says no I really want you to bypass all the challenges so you can walk into Jannah smiling and nothing so then there's a second announcement Allah says I forgive these people due to the gathering of, gathering of dhikr wala and on top of that all of your sins Allah says I've transformed them into good deeds due to that gathering so should a person be lazy with dhikr of Allah, tell me? A person who is lazy and negligent, he's not preparing for the hereafter. He say, no, no, it's okay, I'll wait to the hereafter. I'll take the challenges and tests and I'll go through the exam. He doesn't want makhfirah here. But Allah Ta'ala has made everything easy for us. Allah has given us a car, we'll go and drive in it, we'll sit. And they will just go and sit in the gathering and come back. No, a person, when Allah gives you an opportunity to practice good deeds, you should have the intention in your mind, Allah, I'm not even capable of practicing the deeds you allow me to Allah. Prior to doing that, Allah, I'll pray to nafil to be grateful. So Allah looks at the heart of the individual, how grateful he is. That's why I said that when a person is about to do dhikr of Allah, remember Allah, then in his heart he should feel that I'm about to do the greatest ibadah to remember Allah. And that it's a good news for us that if Allah Ta'ala announces at the end of the gathering that you're forgiven, tell me on the plane of resurrection you're standing after death. And if somebody says to you that you have... Uh, that, for example, you have five houses. You'll say, go, I'm not interested in houses. Or you have ten cars. Go, I don't want to. If you, somebody says, you have these many wives. They say, go, I'm not interested. But if the angel says, you're forgiven, says, oh, yes, yes, listen to him, the angel. That's all you'll be interested in. Because that's the time we'll be standing in. So today, nobody's listening. Allah's anna- angels are announcing regards the gathering of dhikr and forgiveness. And we have no importance. Allah's angels are announcing, sit in the dhikr of Allah in the morning in Ramadan. You are extremely sinful. You can't count your sins. We know your situation. Your every breath you are sinning. And even you are sinning in your thoughts. You have sins of thinking. You have sins of... Not, sin isn't just physically practiced from the hand or you swear someone from the tongue. That the sawarat, shaitan, he is flowing in the blood of a person. In his thoughts. Why? Allah Ta'ala says that he's got the power. He's flowing in the blood. The person cannot count how many sins he's got. That's why Allah Ta'ala said that you have to be cautious and careful. Those majalis and the sources of good deeds. Time and time again Allah Ta'ala makes you. Ramadan comes, then again Ramadan comes again the next year. Then Ramadan comes again the next year. Allah gives repeated opportunities. Allah's fadl, his grace, he wants us to do good. To benefit. So it depends that that only that person can get the benefit from an action who has the greatness of the action in his heart. It's a great action I'm about to do. Why should I lose out? Why should I? Allah's announcing come to the majlis to his gathering of dhikr. Allah's announcing in Ramadan about his gathering of dhikr. Even if I have to sit there for an hour, what's the pain for me? That if, for example, I have to, Allah Ta'ala even likes this, if you're tired in the house, Allah's home, in the gathering of dhikr, and you're tired, you keep moving your body, you can't sit still, even then Allah Ta'ala likes that. If today we uh, uh, accept Allah's name, that today we reject Allah's name, then what will be our hal tomorrow after death in the hereafter? Are we not going to die? Are we not going to die? So this is the preparation for death. What else is the preparation for death if it isn't these sorts of gatherings? So how fortunate are those people who have the greatness for this action in their heart? That for them, do you have to beg those people? Do you have to explain to those people? That, oh, if you explain to somebody, oh, this is very nice, this bread. If I put in front of you bread and, and cakes and matai from Ambala, you don't need to convince anyone or motivate him to eat. That is tasty, etc. If I put jalebis, warm jalebis in front of you, do I have to force you and persuade you? Even if you've got diabetes, even then you'll eat that, that food, won't you? Will you? You'll stop that person, he'll be running to that food. Grabbing that food, isn't it? Because he knows there's benefit in it. So he sees the benefit, the taste, the sweetness. So when Allah Ta'ala is announcing, come, I want to forgive you, I'm about to forgive you, come to the majlis. 
come to the gathering. And this is the month of forgiveness. This is the month of forgiveness that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, that is stated in hadith, is stated in hadith that if you in this month, if you, for example, your servant or worker, if you make his burden less, if you make his burden less, if a khadim or ghulam, like for example, you have a servant or a worker, if you make his burden less, Allah says, I'll forgive you and I'll free you from the fire of Jahannam. So this is what Ramadan, the Holy Prophet is guaranteed that the month is about to come, do these actions in the month. Be merciful to people, treat humans kindly, the creation of Allah kindly, nicely. This is maghfirah, Allah's rahmah, mercy, tell me. So here, we don't have ghulams or servants, especially in this country. Yes? So what does this mean? That every person is a hakim over somebody, like a ruler, or you have authority. For example, when you go home, you are like a minister. The, the rest are ministers, and you're president. You're in charge of everybody. For example, your wife is there, your children, they are dependent on you, they rely on you, your children are scared of you. Abu's going to do this now. Whatever the father instructions says, it will be your instructions. So you're the hakim, you're the ruler, or are you not? And everybody else is dependent on you, relying on you. So if we... The men folk, if we change our style a little bit in this month, that if we are the hakims, if we're authority or rulers in our homes, then if, for example, has given us a higher rank, then what should we do? Naturally, what should we do? What emotion should we demonstrate in our houses, in our homes, amongst our families? That we should lessen the burden of the, the family, the, the household. We should lessen the burden. We should express and demonstrate raham and mercy. We should show mercy to the people at home. And what will we get? Such a great reward? Maghfirat, forgiveness, Allah Ta'ala says. Forgiveness. But we don't value for maghfirat. So as I said, until we don't have the greatness in our heart for an action, we cannot get the benefit for the action. So my brothers, most important thing is that Allah has given us this month. If we waste this month, then He's not just wasted His year, He's wasted His whole life. Think about this. There Allah Ta'ala's rahmah is raining down in this month and small, small actions, they are big, big favors of Allah. And as I said to you in advance, that great ni'mah Allah Ta'ala has given to us is the gatherings of His dhikr, of His remembrance. So much Allah has praised the dhikr of Allah. In normal days, the gatherings of dhikr of Allah. Normal days, away from Ramadan. So brothers... My brothers, where can a person get this reward that he sits in such a majlis that from the morning until the evening, until Ishraq, in the morning he's doing dhikr of Allah after Fajr, until sunrise, in a majlis, in a gathering. If you were to learn the value, he would appreciate, he would appreciate so much this life scene. That from 200 miles, hundreds of miles away, people would travel to the majlis, the gathering of dhikr of my Sheikh Hazrat, because they knew the value of it, the reward. They had the value for it. They appreciated it. Qadr. And Allah Ta'ala used to put so much love in my heart and greatness in my heart for Hazrat that I can't even remember that I would leave everything here in this country and I would travel regularly to the country of my Hazrat I had a shop, I had a business. And what would I do? That I'd say, I'd leave my shop, I'd, I'd give it to the responsibility, I'd say, that, can you look after my shop for two weeks or three weeks, can you run the shop, the business? They said, yes, we'll, run, we'll look after it for you, we'll run it for you. And I knew that this shop is just money that's going to be until I'll get that, but I won't get my shake after this. I won't get the sober, the company of my shaykh. That the company of the wali of Allah, the friend of Allah, once it's gone, you won't be able to get it again, I'm telling you this now. It won't return. This is a big, big statement. That everything can be compensated for. But the wali of Allah's company, physically, you cannot compensate for missing it. For losing it. What's the reason for that? The, the, in his majlis, what happens in the majlis, the gathering of the wali of Allah, is that Allah Ta'ala's rahmah's mercy shower down, and Allah's magnificence rains down. And when a human being joins the gathering, then everybody, according to his capacity and esteem, is going to say, Allah Ta'ala gives to the people benefit. So these are the statements of the pious sellers, I'm telling you. When you join the majlis of a wali of Allah, Allah Ta'ala's tajalliyat descend on the gatherings. So when a person attends, when the wali of Allah is there in the gathering, Allah Ta'ala's tajalliyat descend. Allah says in Surah Ar-Rahman that the tajalli is at that time whilst the wali Allah is there. That if you want that tajalli that was there yesterday, it comes again today, it's gone. That magnificence, that splendor is gone from yesterday. 
the kefiyah, the emotions, the splendor, the rahmah, the mercy that was in the gathering yesterday, that's gone. So the biggest murid, the student, was considered that person who never missed the gathering and the sobat of his sheikh. That, that he used to get the most credit in the khanka that we saw. That even though it was explained that mashallah, this person is a khadim of Hazrat we've never seen that he's missed the company of Hazrat Sahib. He's never been in attendance. Never. So even me, myself, once, you could say, that I tied that knot. Whatever it is, whatever happens, that I'm going to carry on doing this action. Whatever happens, the Hazrat Sobat, I'm not going to leave his company. My sheikh, my teacher. What other, what other amal did I have? What other deed I had? I had no uh, amal, no actions, no deeds. Nor did I have the power, the ability to practice good. Yes, but I never left his company, his sobat. And Hazab was amazed and surprised that he's left his home, his family, everything. Everybody would leave and go home, but I'd stay there at the end. Hazab Sahib would say to me, Faruqi Sahib, you're here? I said, no, no, I don't feel like going. I don't want to depart. Wallah Allah wa knows what was there, what was the, um, the uh, love I had or whatever. But I didn't have that, but I made a promise to myself. That I'm going to be regular in physically attending the Sobat of Azab. Because the company, the gathering of a Wali Allah, a Sheikh, a teacher, is such a place that a person, when he attends that, he can never leave without benefit. He can never leave without benefit. You know what you get at the company, the Sobat of a Sheikh? What do you get in his majlis? What do you attain? Big, big thing you attain, due to which your whole life, the world and the hereafter is made by, for that individual, that student. What's made? That in the company of the Wali Allah, the teacher, you attain the peace in the heart. That's the big, big nema you get in the company of a sheikh. Yes, from Allah Ta'ala's direction, you get the peace and contentment and the salamat in the heart that you cannot get anywhere else. The emotions and the condition and the circumstances of the heart, they're transformed. The more adab you have, the more you work hard and make effort, you have manners, then Allah gives that. Wherever Allah Ta'ala's tajal is, you can go to the Kaaba, for example. There's magnificence there, there's splendor there as well. I saw a person, he was sat next to me, it was Fajr time. And it was a beautiful time in front of the Kaaba, Fajr time. You know that it's a beautiful scene there. Fajr time, alhamdulillah, you, mashallah, all of you, you go there. I've gone a few times. And mashallah, you are regular in traveling there, going there. Mashallah, in front of the Kaaba, lots of nur, lots of light, lots of illumination there, Allah's splendor, Allah's magnificence there. So there was a person there, and I saw him sitting there after Fajr. And he, his emotions used to change at that time after Fajr. His situation, that just like he's white and he'd go so light and, and just like there was no blood in his body flowing in the body. And then, then he used to look at the Kaaba and he used to be overawed by the Kaaba. Then he'd look down, then he'd look up at the Kaaba again. Then his emotions would change again. Regularly he'd be doing that at that time. His situation and emotions were unique. What's the reason? The Kaaba is one. But everybody else was in a different situation. The Kaaba is one and Allah Ta'ala's tajalli is descending from the heavens. But that person is benefiting who in reality had the adab and he had the manners and he had the, the esteem for the Kaaba. It was his heart that was made, that was absorbing that greatness of the Kaaba. So he was obtaining the greatness from that place. So wherever Allah Ta'ala's magnificence is present, that person will benefit who makes his heart prepared and ready to attain the benefit from that gathering. He has yaqeen, he has belief, he has faith that he will benefit. So you get the same tajaliyat, the magnificence and splendor of Allah in the gathering of the walis of Allah, the mashayikh. The same magnificence, the same tajalli. So a person who's proud and sitting in a gathering, he won't get any benefit. If he's got kibr, he will get no benefit. Nothing. Yes? A person who's got negative thoughts, who criticizes, he'll come and leave empty-handed. Nothing. Rather, he'll have a, a burden on the day of judgment. I'll say, I sent you to a gathering, a majlis of my remembrance, and you still were stupid after that. You didn't rectify yourself. So these are the important points, my brothers. These are the important points to understand. That our nafs, our desires, we can be broken from inside. But the reality of what Allah Ta'ala has given, benefits in the world, the majalis, the gatherings of dhikr, they are there. So we should extremely cautiously approach these gatherings. Ramadan, only a short time is left. Most of the time is left. What have we earned? What have we attained from this month? We should have uh, greatness with these gatherings. And all. How much nur have we attained from this month? 
That, for example, somebody had greatness of Ramadan, he just prays Tarawih. Someone just keeps the fast. Someone says, okay, I'll read more extra Quran. Allah's Nabi explained lots of things in detail that we should do in this month. So even now this time, in this month, a day to visit regularly the gatherings of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, with strength grab hold of the gatherings of dhikr and even if you have to travel or make effort they are extremely beneficial is that effort oh it's difficult for me to come it's difficult for me to sit that's the enjoyment drag yourself to the gathering I saw um, a pious person an elder in my family he got uh, the stroke he had an attack in uh, old age subhanallah but mashallah he was very pious and he used to do a lot of ibadah and he was like the, the, he used to look after the masjid his mosque and he used to live on the third story in Karachi Nazimabad who was my grandfather Nana and it was Fajr time and I saw that person like a child he's dragging himself down and the stairs and he's grinding him, uh, himself across the, the dusty ground to get to the masjid and people said who is this person? When they went close, that it was Nana Sab. They said, How are you? And that everybody knew him. And he was very old and weak. And he said, Where are you going? He said, I can't stay at home. The, I've heard the azan of the masjid. And he, he said, My heart was desperate. So I'm dragging my body along the ground to go to the masjid. This is the greatness of Allah's home. Yes, salah. Other people are going to pray salah. Other people are going. And the Sharia allows also in that instance, Sharia is there, the excuse. But he had the jazbah and the love that dragged him there to the masjid, to the house of Allah. So one is the adab of the Sharia, and one is the adab of love. So Sharia may excuse you from certain actions and circumstances, but when you have love, that will, that for example, we say, where is it written here? This is not in Sharia, for example. Where is this written? There's no Sharia point that you have to do wudu when you go to the sheikh. These are the adab of Sharia. But the adab of muhabbat of love is that don't even stare or glare at your sheikh or teacher. May not be that by glaring, you do ghustaki and disrespect. Because shaitan, he's there. Shaitan is there in the veins. So what adab are these? These are the adab, the, the principles and rules of adab, of respect. So lots of people look on the eyes of sharia, that we can do this, we don't, we, can, we don't have to do this. But the adab of muhabbat are different, unique. So muhabbat and love has its own level. So these adab that you should be cautious. Why should you lower your gaze? It may not be that when you stare at the teacher, you disrespect. Maybe by looking and staring at the teacher, shaitan will make you think something negative or say something negative. Maybe in your looking that he'll say, oh, there's some defect in the sheikh or in the teacher. Because that he's not an angel sitting in front of you. He's a human being. He's got maybe defects. He's got uh, issues. So maybe when you look towards the teacher, glare at him or stare at him, you'll see something that you don't like or, or maybe shaitan will make you think negatively. Then you will have lost all of your life effort will have gone to waste. So this is how delicate is the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the important thing for us to understand. That he who has adab, manners, he will have a good destiny. He who has disrespect, he will have a bad destiny. So whenever you do any action, understand the adab of the action, understand the greatness of the action, so you can get the benefit from the action. So my brothers, wherever you get Allah Ta'ala's nearness, wherever Allah Ta'ala announces maghfirah, forgiveness, especially in this month, then grab hold of the action. Do the action regularly. And this, mashallah, the majlis of dhikr of Allah is such a great act, uh, uh, majlis that after every majlis Allah Ta'ala announces, after every gathering Allah Ta'ala announces, so if you've got the greatness in your heart, and if Allah Ta'ala's fadl is there, Allah's grace, will Allah's mercy, in Bolton, not just, but the whole world, mashallah, this majlis is established. Yes, look, Allah's fadl and His grace, it's not just in Bolton we're doing dhikr, that if you see that there are thousands of people who are uh, at this moment in time joining this gathering, there will be no country in the world where the women and the men are not sitting down and doing dhikr of Allah. Yes, we do dhikr of Allah three times a day in Bolton. So in Saudi, according to the time, it happens in Pakistan. People stay awake somewhere. It's 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in Indonesia or Malaysia. It's different time. And different parts of the world, according to the time, the three the gatherings of dhikr in Ramadan, people say, we don't want to miss them. Yes, we waste them here, we miss them here, I've got to go to work. Brothers, this month, make something from this month. Get some benefit from this month. 
construct something with this waste of time activities of the dunya we're wasting our time traveling and this we don't have no respect for this month we don't have respect we haven't prepared a schedule for this month that how should we value this month how should we spend the time today this month whoever values this month the namas of this month are now allah's given extra majalis will come they will continue after ramadan but the majalis of ramadan will not come back remember this so inshallah these gatherings that let me get rid of my laziness and neglect we are all in the same boat we get lazy we lose heart we lose hope but pull ourselves together in this month and let's work hard make effort and with Allah Ta'ala's permission and if you make the niyyah then Allah will send his help yes remember this that after this majlis that for example as long as you're in the gathering of dhikr of Allah in this gathering Wait for Allah Ta'ala's announcement that after the announcement Allah Ta'ala's gathering Allah announces that your forgiveness has been made. So Allah will not leave. That's how, for example, I used to say I'm not going to leave the gathering until Hazrat Sahib doesn't go. I used to stay sitting there four or five days I wouldn't eat or sleep. i just stay in Hazrat Sahib's sobat. To the truth, I was mad, mashallah, and in love with his company, with the benefit of his company. And as, until I don't get that announcement of Makfirat, then I'm gone. So as long as I don't hear the announcement of your rule, your soul, if it doesn't hear the announcement of forgiveness, say, I'm not leaving this gathering. I'm sat here, whatever is the situation. So we should be determined, be courageous. The days are passing. If you've got negative thoughts, let negative thoughts, nonsense thoughts, but shaitan, that's the influence of shaitan or bad forces, but I'm sitting here, I know I'm going to get the benefit. Sometimes it's not necessarily that your heart has got muhasabat, with who you are sat with. It's not necessary that your heart will say, no, 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 oh, I don't want to listen to what he's saying, I'm not getting any benefit. But no, I'm going to stay in that gathering. It's a beneficial gathering. So three majlises in majalis in Ramadan, we have three gatherings of dhikr of Allah. So mashallah, we and the second ashra, if we attend the three gatherings, then you will get the objective of the third ashra, maghfira, forgiveness. What else do we want from this ashra? No, no, I want to do this ibadah, this worship, that ibadah. What have you recited? How much nafal have you prayed? How many Jews have you prayed? What salah shall we pray? Don't pray nothing, brothers. Just attend the majlis and sit in the gathering where Allah Ta'ala is announcing maghfirah, forgiveness. That's it. Because this is the month of forgiveness. What else is it? Say subhanallah. Go. So a little bit of time is left. Let's do the dhikr of Allah now with a short time that's left. Recite the ruchri. بسم الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على اللهم صل على محمد اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا زنوا نازلوا نازلنا وجدا خطونا كل ذلك اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمت ما قرت أصرت ما لم تصرفت ما تعلمت أنت المقدم وأنت المقر لا إله إلا أنت لا إله إلا أنت يا حي قيوم بحمدك صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد